bittersweet memories that is all I'm taking with me oh hey guys are you here for the podcast I'm working two seconds okay What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Life of Lee podcast. This is episode two and as always I am your host Lee Anthony. Before we get into this episode let's have a word from our sponsors. Yep we don't have any so let's just get on. Um, Before I start this episode if there's one piece of advice that I'd love to give everybody out there and it's really simple and it's really basic but it can really help to manage your life better. Start making a to-do list. Now what I do is I write my to-do list the night before and I fill it up with stuff that I need to get done and stuff that I know I'm going to do and then stuff that probably won't happen. Like the first thing on my list is wake up, you know? So as soon as I wake up, roll over, tick that box, I'm already doing shit on my to-do list. And in the last couple of days with trying to do the podcast and trying to do other things and just keeping everything manageable, just write out a list with a little box next to it and as you go through your day, check it off. And by the end of the day, when you look and you see all the ticks and, you know, it makes you feel a lot better. And like I do really simple stuff, like wake up, have breakfast. You know, that's stuff that I know I'm going to do within 20 minutes waking up. I've already ticked off two boxes. Um, also put in stuff like pick up motorbike. Like I ride motorbikes. I don't have one right now, though. There's no chance I was getting a motorbike today, but I wrote it down anyway. And instead of putting a tick in it, I put a little arrow, meaning that I'll write it out again tomorrow. And then eventually one day, I'll be able to tick that box off, you know. Um, It's just a little thing that I've started doing in the last year or so. Um, Can't even remember who I picked it up from. But yeah, it has really helped me and it might help you too. So, first episode was basically just an introduction. Um, This episode, I'm going to try and go into a bit more of where I came from, um, just the history of me, what brought me to this seat right now, this moment. Um, first episode, I had fun doing it and editing it. I was going to wait until that episode had went live and then see what kind of like reaction I got and that kind of stuff until I'd done the second episode. <laughs> but then I started thinking, like, I don't know how this is going to go. Like, I might get torn apart from this. People might just not be interested. People might not give a fuck. There might be haters out there, you know what I mean? So rather than put the first one out and maybe be, like, I don't know, discouraged by the response, I thought, you know what? The first one's done. That will get put up, and I'm just going to crack straight on with the second one. Um, not give my time, not give myself time to think about it or to for doubts to build up or any of that kind of stuff. I'm just going to keep this train rolling and just keep putting it out. And if anyone does hate on it, like that's on you, really. Um, I honestly feel anyone that hates anything that anyone's doing, then you're really just hating yourself. And for something like this, where I'm literally just talking about my life, I'm not, you know trying to create any um, arguments or different points of view or any of that kind of stuff. This is just simply me talking about my life. So I don't know why anyone would hate that. But if you do hate it, you know what I mean? Haters going to hate. That's, that's, that's on you. Um, but if you enjoy it, like, subscribe, and there'll be more coming. So yeah, um, the, last, the first episode was 38 minutes long. I'm going to try and keep them to around... 30 minutes, um, mainly because I'm recording on my phone and my phone keeps cutting out after half an hour. But I also feel like half an hour is a good good block of time for me to sit and do this and it's also a good block of time for you to sit and watch. I mean, like I've watched Rogan podcasts that have lasted like four hours and you're just sitting like, and I don't want to do that to you, you know, I want you to just nip in a little half hour episode and then get on with your day. Uh, I don't want to take up too much of your time. So this episode I'm just going to talk about where I come from, how I got here um, and yeah, I'll probably I'll probably talk about things that I'll go into deeper detail on later 
but this is just going to be an overview of how this big hippie looking motherfucker got in front of you. So I was born in London on March 25th, 1987, 32 years ago. Like we live in 2020, like is that not just cool as fuck? Um, yeah, I was born in London, lived down there till I was three years old and then my parents decided that they would move us up to Scotland, my mum's from Scotland. Um, yeah, my parents decided they would move me and my older brother Scotty. We would all move up to Scotland because they thought that the school systems were better and the education system was better in Scotland, which is hilarious. Um, when I get to talking about my school life, like I did not enjoy high school whatsoever. Um, and I'll discuss that deeper, but for them to base their decision on moving on me and Scotty getting a better education up here, it's just really ironic how things turned out. And it's something that I think about a lot, like if I hadn't moved from London, my life would have been completely different. Um, like 90% of the people that I know now, I wouldn't know. 90% of the experiences I've had wouldn't have happened, or if they did happen, if I still became an actor, it would have been different. If I'd still became a free runner, it would have been different. And there was another point in my life we were meant to move to Kirkcaldy, which is on the east coast of Scotland, when I was um, 12, I believe. I had one year left of primary school, and we were meant to be moving, and it ended up not happening. So that was another point in my life where if we'd moved then, I would have went to a different high school, I would have had different friends, different girlfriends, different relationships, different experiences, my whole life could have been different. And I mean, it's pretty pointless pondering this kind of stuff or what would have happened and what might have happened, but it is just something that crosses my mind quite a lot. Like there's been definitive moments in my life where things could have been completely different, but they weren't. And this is how my life ended up. So moves up here and we lived in a place called, the town's called Wisher. Um, originally we lived in a street called Pentland Road in Wisher Hill, which is a rough place. It was it was really rough back then, it's still pretty rough now. And like I was poor, like really poor growing up and I'm sure it affected me in some way, but when I was younger I had such a powerful imagination and I used to live all the time in my head and when you've got a really good imagination you don't notice that you're poor, you know? You don't notice that you're lonely, you never get bored because everything can always be something else. Um, like I wasn't getting taken on holidays when I was a kid, I didn't have the, all the newest best toys when I was a kid. Don't get me wrong, I had my Power Rangers, like no one fucked with me in my Power Rangers. I had my Zords, I had my figures and um, that was that was my jam back in the day. But I, I kind of knew I was different from, not different from kids, but I knew I was in a different social standing from a lot of kids. Um, you can tell just by the way they're dressed, you know, and what they do on their summer holidays. If they're coming in and like, oh yeah, had a great three week vacation in Florida. It's like, what did you get up to? And I'm like, eh, my mum and dad took me to the car boot sale on Sunday. You know? And yeah, I did, I did notice that I definitely wasn't in the, in the higher class, you know what I mean? Um, so, started primary school, um, pretty standard. I, I can vaguely remember when I started primary school, I loved to learn. Like, I was quite a smart kid when I was younger, and it was simply because I questioned everything. I wanted to know how everything worked, and then I wanted to know how that worked in relation to everything else. I wanted to know what things were made of, you know, like, I, I literally wanted to know everything about the world that was in front of me. And I know it drove my teachers mad, like teachers had um, brought this up a couple of parents evenings, like Lee just will not stop asking questions. And I'm like, it's not my fault if you don't have all the answers, you know what I mean? I'm just trying to find some information here. And so yeah, primary school was pretty standard. Um, throughout most of this time, I really, I've never been the most social person. Um, not, not that I'm antisocial, it was, like back in the day, um, there was a kid lived in my street and me and him ended up becoming friends and his older brother was friends with my older brother. And I just kind of, I remember kind of thinking back then, okay, cool, I've got a friend, that's that, sorted. 
I don't need to try and get any more other friends. I've, I've already got one and we do stuff together and we have a great time. So as far as friendship goes, cool, it's sorted. And I, I, I've always kind of been that way ever since. Like I know some people and the, the social aspect of their life is what drives them. You know, they want to be around as many people as possible. They want to talk to as many people as possible, constantly messaging people. And, and I just don't, not that I don't have the time or I don't care, but it's the way I see it, the more people that you let into your life, the more of their life you inevitably take on and vice versa. And it's kind of selfish, but I really just want to focus on my life while I'm here. Like I've got maybe 80 years here, probably more like 60 considering the drugs I took when I was younger, the fact I still smoke and all that kind of stuff. I'm 32 now, like I've maybe already passed the halfway mark, you know, time's running out. So if, if I had the choice of hanging out with a bunch of people and just sitting, talking bullshit really, not doing anything, or going out training by myself, or sitting myself writing a film, or editing something, or even just reading a book, I would much rather do that because that's exactly what I want to do in that moment and it's not constrained or influenced by what anyone else is doing. And I know, like this is another reason for this podcast, I really don't care what anyone thinks about me as long as what they think about me is real, if you know what I mean. Like, if someone's opinion of me is based on rumour or what someone else has said and you know it's kind of twisted and that kind of stuff, that annoys me a little bit. But if someone knows exactly who I am, why I do what I do, and they still don't like me, then that's fine. But if someone doesn't like me or they have preconceived judgments against me based on what someone else has said, then that kind of bugs me a little bit. And it's just the way I look at life. I don't I don't criticize anybody I don't know. I don't talk about anything that I don't know about. Like I hate football. I fucking hate it. Like it's an alright sport and I appreciate the physicality, but the the meaning that people put on this game, like my whole life I've, I've had conversations with guys and they've been like, what team do you support? I'm like, I, I don't really, I don't. I'm like, what? You need to support a football team. You need to support a football team. It's like, I don't, I, I really do not need to spend my time dedicated to what 11 people are doing on a football pitch. You know what I mean? And there's people out there, their entire lives are based around whether a football team wins or loses. You know, if their team wins on Friday, they'll be happy, they'll be ecstatic, they'll be over the moon, they'll be the life and soul of the party. But if their team loses, oh, they'll be depressed, like people will actually cry, you know, like people will go home and beat the shit out of their missus just because their team went 2-0 down. It is fucking madness. But I used to play football, I played for two teams. Like I, I've got experience of it, I've played the game and I've had enough experience to know, you know, it's just not for me. And then when I meet people nowadays who, like I'll be talking about parkour and they'll go, oh, that's stupid. It's like, have you ever tried it? Have you ever felt the sensation that you feel when you've just overcame a jump that you thought was impossible or you've just learned a, a brand new trick that, you know, or sorry, you've just landed a brand new trick that you've been trying for ages. Like, you cannot say that's stupid. The experiences that parkour have given me, that parkour has given me, and the places I've traveled to, the people I've met, none of that is stupid, you know? And if, if I had to compare the two, between me reaching the absolute peak of my physicality and mentality and being able to perform movements that I thought was impossible, like I grew up watching Power Rangers. They were all doing the flips and that kind of stuff. I loved it. But that instilled in my mind, like, oh, so in order to do flips and stuff, you need to be a superhero, you know? And that's the way I always thought about it growing up. It's only superheroes and ninjas that can do that kind of stuff. So when I actually started training it, and then I actually got good at it, and I could actually do the stuff that I used to see Power Rangers and Jackie Chan and that kind of stuff doing, it amazed me, and it still amazes me every day. Like, a lot of the time, if I'm out training myself, or even with the team, you'll just land a move and you'll get someone walking by and they'll go, oh yeah, you're just showing off. It's like, yeah, 100%, I am showing off. I am showing off what the human body is capable of and not just that, I'm showing off what I'm capable of 
and I'm not showing off to you or to you or to anybody else. I don't give a fuck if you see it or not. I am showing off to myself every single day because it used to be my dream to be able to do this stuff and now I can. So yeah, I'm showing off. I'm living life. You know what I mean? And if, yeah. Um, so anyway, where was I? Primary school. Um, pretty standard as much as I can remember. Um, I did start to notice subtle differences though. Um, for instance, I loved reading as a kid. I would read everything. And I remember in primary seven, so I would have been like 12 years old, we were sitting at reading time and near enough every kid in the class was reading Goosebumps. And I was sitting reading It by Stephen King. So everyone else is reading like these Goosebumps but Goosebumps books, which are like that thick. And I'm sitting reading It by Stephen King, which if you've read it, it deals with some kind of issues that maybe a 12 year old kid shouldn't be reading about. But at the same time, reading about that stuff at such a young age opened me up to possibilities. You know what I mean? Like that's why I love reading so much. I heard a quote that says, um, a man who doesn't read lives one life, but a man who reads lives a thousand lives. And that really resonated with me because when you read a book, it's not like watching a movie where it's all presented to you and it's only the the words and the dialogue that you hear on screen. When you're reading a book, you get insight into that person's internal narrative and their monologue and why they're doing things and how they feel about things and that kind of stuff. And that helped shape my experience through reading all these fictional people's experiences because they're not really fictional at the end of the day. Like I'm willing to bet every character Stephen King has ever written has got a little bit of him in it, you know? So, and I love Stephen King. Um, I've read most of his books, The Dark Tower series by Stephen King. If you've not read it, go and read it. It is just incredible. Don't watch the movie. It is, I, I should maybe do a whole episode on just that movie because I have never seen a film take such rich and vibrant and just deep, like, ori um, original content and then turn it into a film that just misses the mark so, so widely. But anyway, that's Stephen King's life. This is the life of Lee. So yeah, um, around about that time, around about primary seven, um, and this, this will be a full episode. Um, again, I'll just skim over it, but something happened around that time that completely shook up my worldview and destroyed me on on many many levels um and this is thing while i have no problem talking about my own life my life obviously features other people and they don't have the same openness as i do so although i'll talk about things from my perspective i will keep certain things out of it and certain people out of it just in respect to them so when i was around 11 or 12 there was a situation that happened that i found out about um, like I was never involved in this situation directly really but I was the only person who knew everyone that was involved and what had happened and all this kind of stuff and I had a choice to make back then and the choice was basically I could speak out and put an end to this or not and I knew that if I didn't speak out people were going to get hurt and people did get hurt and that is my responsibility and that is something I've had to live with every day since then. The fact that, and yeah, like don't get me wrong, I've been to two counsellors in my life and a drug counsellor and I've spoke to them about this, I've also spoke to other people and you know people just want to be nice and they want to be like oh it's not your fault, you can't blame yourself and, and all that kind of shit but what they don't realise is I do blame myself and I have ever since that day and if I didn't blame myself if I didn't feel that there was some ultimate retribution that I had to make, then that wouldn't have been, I wouldn't have had the driving force in my life that I've had since that day. So a lot of people will say, oh, it's not your fault and all this kind of stuff. It was. As soon as I found out about this and said nothing, and it was allowed to continue to happen, then that was my fault, you know? And I can say that now, I can look back and... It cost me so much to make that decision. Like, it cost me, like, from the ages of maybe 11 to around about 16, 17, I was sleeping maybe an hour a night. And, you know, like, they're formative years. They are very important years. You know, you're going through puberty. You're going through a lot of stuff. You need your sleep. 
but with thinking about everything that was going on and how it related to me and every possible outcome of every possible situation, you know, it just it kept me awake at night. Um, so that led to me becoming very, very reclusive, like really reclusive. Um, I still had to go to school every day. I'd started high school by this point, but I wasn't engaging with anyone around me. You know, like at lunchtime, there'd be a thousand kids in the playground and I still felt just sheer isolation. Um, because I didn't think I could talk about anything at all. You know, I didn't think I could talk about the big things and that was stopping me from talking about the smaller things. And it was stopping me from just having normal interactions with people. But at the same time, with me being as um, withdrawn and as lonely, I suppose, while everyone else was out, you know, hanging out and having a good time and that kind of stuff, I was I was in my room reading. I was I was in my room coming up with ideas and just it allowed me to really spend a lot of time being self analytical, which I really help I really think has helped me later on in life to be the person that I am now, you know, an actor, a free runner and all the stuff that I do. And this is the thing like and this is what I said in the first um, podcast, if you remove the words good or bad from experience and just see it as experience and that's what i had to do because (coughs) a lot of being all this was bad um in a lot of respects but if none of this stuff had happened i really doubt i would have ended up being who i am now so although that was bad stuff goodness came out of it so like i said before you cannot see any experience as being good or bad it is all just experience yeah so First and second year in high school, uh, my attendance was like, I think first year was 97%, second year was like 99%, and then third year my attendance was 38%, and then fourth year my attendance was 12%, 13%. And like, I remember like the first time I dogged school, uh, for anyone who's not in Scotland, that's playing truant from school we call it dogging up here but dogging has a completely different term in most other parts of the country so the first time i ever played truant it was um a friend of mine had ripped off a dealer like nine um, ounces of hash and the dealer's like nephew or some shit was at our school and he got word that this guy was going to be waiting on him in school with a hammer to like fucking kill him basically so me him and i can't remember who else we decided to like play truant or dog it for the day and i remember having this day off and obviously you couldn't be around like the local town or that kind of stuff you know in case anyone saw you so uh, we had to like hide out down the woods and you know and i remember feeling this excitement all day long you know like everyone else is in school they're they're all doing this boring like geography or pe or whatever and i'm you know, I'm, I'm just running around doing whatever I want and, you know, it, it felt really sneaky and, it, you know, it was like an adrenaline kind of buzz and it also meant that I didn't have to go in and try and play up to everyone, you know, like talk to people and act like a normal person, which was really, really hard for me to act normal and to be like, oh, no, nothing's going on, everything's fine, I'm, I'm just a happy-go-lucky kid because I wasn't, you know what I mean, and it, it was really hard to pretend that I was anything other than that. So that was the first time like I ever dogged it. And then from then on, it was just like, I don't need to go to school anymore. It, it's that simple. Like um, my parents, they were leaving for work in the morning before we were leaving for school. And then we were meant to be back from school before like they got in from work. So I would get up in the morning, put my uniform on. And then like my mom would leave. And then I would just sit watch some morning tv um you know like watch countdown go back to bed just sit on the internet read and then around about half three i would get back into my uniform and then act like i'd been at school all day um on the days my mom was off i would just get up get dressed leave and then go down the woods like where i live we've got acres and acres of woodland so i would just go down there spend all day walking around and you know just doing fuck all really so that went on that that caused some problems i ended up getting taken to like children's panels and and all this kind of stuff and 
yeah, it just it, it was just a load load of hassle really. But um, so then sixteen came. Um, yeah, I'll just take you through stuff. I'll go into relationships and all that kind of stuff later. So sixteen came. For the longest time, I'd wanted to join the army. Um, I'd always loved, like, whenever I was like playing games, I was always a soldier. Whenever I was down the woods, I always had a branch, you know, and I'd be on patrol and taking enemy fire and and all this kind of stuff. I I just loved the the thought of being in the military, and I also knew about the SAS when I was younger. So I used to get like books on the SOS SAS, like the SAS Encyclopedia. Um, talking about their training, their weapons drills, their equipment, like everything, and I would study them. And I'm talking like I was eight years old at this time. So it was always my dream to join the army and then eventually join the SAS. So I joined cadets, the army cadets, when I was 14, I think. Um, I was there for a few years. I got promoted to Lance Corporal, and it was a great time, you know, it was just... I mean, like I remember the first day I went was a Thursday, and then they had a camp that weekend. So I went on the Thursday, and they gave me like a mismatched uniform, and then I went to this camp, and the first day they took us to the range. So I'm like 13 years old, with an SA-80 firing live rounds down range, and it, it was incredible, you know, it's a fucking machine gun. Um, so yeah, I, I love cadets, and I, I tried to do the best, like I saw cadets as me being in the military, like we're wearing the same outfits as the army, we're we're shooting the same guns as the army, we're staying in the same camps as the army. I'm in the army. Um so yeah, when I left school at sixteen, and that's kinda why I didn't really bother sitting my exams or any of that kind of shit, because I knew I was going to the army. And also uh, the third year prelims prelim exams, like I hadn't been in school for months before my prelims. And a couple of guys that I knew were like, oh, you're going to come in and do your exams. We're all going to get a drink after it and blah, blah, blah. So I thought, you know what, fuck it, I'll go in. I'll sit in an exam hall for a couple of hours and then we'll all go get a drink, smoke some dope or whatever the fuck. So I went in and sat my third year prelims and I was like, I passed most of them. Like, I think I passed all of them. And that was with me not being in school for months before this. Hello, Ragnar. Are you podcast? So, um... And I remember thinking, like, I'd had, like, discussions with teachers when I was back at school, and they would say, oh, if you don't go to, if you don't come to school, you're going to ruin your life, and, you know, you're throwing away your potential and all this kind of stuff. And then I went and I sat the exams, and I passed them, and it's like, well, do I really need to be here? You know, if this is exams, if this is what you are saying, I need to be in school to pass, and I've just passed them without being in school, I don't need to be here. And that's like... I think this is really when I developed this attitude of I hate being told what to do, not what to do, you know, if like I'm working a job and someone says, oh Lee, can you go and sweep that, then I'll go and do it, it's my job, but I hate being told what I need to do, you know, or if you're a human being, you must do this, and it's like, no, I am, a, 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 like, right now we are the pinnacle of the human race, we really are, like a lot of people woke up today and they were like, oh, it's Monday, I'll do the same stuff that I've done every other Monday and, you know, like they're in a routine. But no, like today is, is like, is a brand new day. It's never happened before. It will never happen again. Hey, Ragnar. So um, do whatever you want. Don't, like, don't follow the path that someone else has laid down. Or if you want to do this, you must do this. If you want to do this, you must do this. No, if you want to do something, then find your own path to it. Like, I know... I know so many actors that will not get visible tattoos, you know, because it might screw them up for a job. I already had loads of visible tattoos when I started acting, and then three years into acting, I went and got like a big neck tattoo. And not only, not only has it been fine, my tattoos, like I had all these tattoos when I was on Game of Thrones. You know what they done? They covered them because there's makeup people that do that. And there's also a couple of roles that I've got where I was cast simply because I had tattoos. So if if you're in drama school or drama class or whatever, and your teacher says, oh yes, do not get tattoos, it will ruin your chances of being an actor, it might not. You know, do whatever you want to do. Like, just keep your goal in mind and take your own path towards it. Don't follow anyone else. So, you know, that's 29 minutes now. Um... So I'll wrap it up there. So this will be 
the school years, we'll call it. Um, and I could go into way more detail about school and different things, and I will, I probably will, but this will just serve as a, another little introduction video into more of the life of Lee. Um, and I'm only doing half hour episodes, I should really be trying to do like two a day or something. But yeah, um, I'll put this one up. I'm now on Instagram as well, uh, life underscore of underscore Lee with three E's. And I'll be putting more stuff up there, training and all that kind of stuff, because the more that I try and connect with people, the more it will motivate me to have good stuff to put out there, you know? So anyway, this will be episode two. Thanks again for stopping by. Um, I hope episode one has done well, or this could be a really short experiment, um, but I'm pretty sure I'll keep going with them anyway. And yeah, I'll catch you next time. Thanks for stopping by. Peace.